This week we're starting to look at React, and th this is my for sure my favorite framework of all the ones that we're going to look at this term. And it's so worth learning, uh, so many good ideas, and it has been just a transformational technology uh, in the last number of years. Like you can't talk about front-end web development without referring to React. So whatever people's opinions are on it, everyone's going to agree that this is a framework that has really transformed the web, has influenced a lot of what is happening on the web. So what are we talking about here? We have a framework that was created by Facebook for Facebook. So right off the bat, what you have is you have a technology that's that's deployed in one of the largest tech products on the planet with, you know, Facebook probably has more users than any other uh, any other project and whether you agree with Facebook or not and their practices, it, the technology that drives what they do is, um, it, it, you know, it has to be, it has to be good. It has to work in all kinds of environments. Um, it has to work on all different devices, all different browsers. It has to work all around the world. And so, you know, Facebook had just a tremendous problem to solve. And they introduced React to make it easier to solve problems that they had building their apps. But Facebook is also an extremely complex uh, product, and it has a mix of different environments and a, a mix of different um, languages and techniques. So uh, lots of back-end web, server-side web stuff that they do, mobile, uh, just all different tooling, languages, etc. So React was designed to fit into this ecosystem that Facebook had built. So one of the things that's really powerful about the fact that React has uh, a user, a dedicated user, has many, I mean, companies like Netflix, like so many people are using React, but because Facebook needs it, they keep it, they keep it developed. They, they put resources into it. So we often talk about this as dog fooding in the sense that, you know, if you're running a dog food company, the joke is that your dog food should be so good that you would be willing to eat it. And so this is what's happening with Facebook and React. They are, they're using the tool that they're building internally. They find bugs, they fix them. They find performance issues, they fix them, etc. So the entire web ecosystem benefits from the energy and the time that's being put into, uh, being put into React uh, from Facebook. Okay, so, what we're going to do this week is we're going to talk about how to build applications and components with React. And in a minute, I want to work through a bunch of code today and update an example that we did in week one and show you how I would rewrite it in React. But before we do that, I want to introduce some of the, the ideas of React. So I'm going to break this up into a few, few pieces, eventually getting into working on the code. So the first thing I want to talk about is just, you know, what does React even look like? Like, what is this thing? So if you go to the React website and you scroll down, there are a number, a number of examples. And essentially what we're talking about here is we're going to be building components. And I'm going to show you different ways of, of writing these components. We're going to talk about the difference of writing components as classes or functions. We'll define what components are later on, but for now, let's define a component as some self-contained element of a web of a web page or a web app. So it could be as simple as what you're seeing right here where we have, um, you know, we're saying hello to, to a user, right? We have some sort of a title. So one of the things that you're going to find right off the bat that's different about React is that you're going to have to learn a new syntax. And we're going to spend time talking about it. So this syntax is JavaScript XML, or it's referred to as JSX. And you can see it right here. And if you look at this, this may have tripped you up. <laughs> like right away, what is this? Is this HTML or is this JavaScript? This is 100% pure JavaScript. And if we were to disable the JSX syntax, this is what React really is. So React is a set of functions for rendering things in the DOM, managing the DOM. We'll talk about this more. And it introduces this really clever syntax for being able to write what almost looks a lot like a templating language. If you've, 
you know, been thinking about doing templating engines in, on server side with Node, well, this looks kind of like that, but it's all JavaScript. It all gets uh, transpiled by Babel. You'll keep hearing about Babel and I'll talk about it more, but Babel is this tool for trans translating one version of JavaScript or one new style of syntax in JavaScript into an older, more compatible version that uh, different runtimes can work with. All right, so at this point, React is by far the most popular front-end framework that there is. So you're looking here in the last six months, um, these are the number of installs on NPM. So people installing it on their projects. You can see that people took a bit of a break over the holidays, but like essentially, it just continues to grow and grow and grow. So this green line here is React, 2 million uh, installs. And we're gonna also in the course be talking about other uh, frameworks. You'll hear about Angular, you'll hear about Vue, you'll hear about these other ones. There's lots of different front-end frameworks. I, I'm just gonna say that React is by far the biggest of all of these. Really, really valuable for you to put the time in uh, into learning it. Now, a word about learning React, and that is something you're gonna hear me say a lot is that you should, you should get used to going to the primary documentation for any technology that you're working with. I know as a student that there's a tendency to go to Stack Overflow, to go to Google, to go to some random blog post that somebody wrote six years ago and they came up with a solution to the problem you're having at 11 o'clock at night. But I want, you to, I want you to change how you approach this. I want you to get used to going to the docs. So React has excellent docs and a tutorial that you can work through, and these will supplement the notes. So the notes this week, we, have, we talk about lots of aspects of this, but they're not a replacement for these docs. So uh, these docs are highly readable. They're, not, they're geared toward people who are learning. So the docs aren't meant for experts and you don't belong here. And just, I mean, sort of a, an interesting, did you know? So the React docs ship in all different localized languages. And an interesting fact is that the Ukrainian localization of these docs was done by Seneca students. So a group of former and current students got together, probably in total about 15 of them or more, and translated all of these docs into Ukrainian which is a really amazing thing. And I bring it up partly because I think it's so cool that our students are using uh, their abilities to contribute back into the project, but also because I wanted you to know that these docs are for you. Like you can read them, you can understand them and you should. So make sure you're diving into these things. Okay, so let me, let me say a few things about learning React, getting started with React. React is going to feel either very weird at first, or it's going to feel really right if the web always felt weird. So it is a fundamental shift in the way that we're going to build for the web. It, it's going to feel very, very different. And so I wanted to just talk a little bit about this, this, um, this aspect of how it is to get started with it. When I started working with React, it took me a long time to really get the to get the ideas to click because React is less of a technology where you have to learn a whole bunch of APIs and code and syntax and so on, although it does have that. It's more of a fundamental rethink of how you approach building uh, interfaces. Okay, so if you consider what we've been doing with something like jQuery, so this is where we were uh, previously, we were talking about using libraries that were meant to paper over the differences in uh, DOM implementations between browsers. So if you look at some code for jQuery, like this one right here, it is very, very close to the DOM. You are doing query selectors, you're working with events, you're working almost right on top of the DOM, and you're thinking very much about putting things into the DOM, creating elements, uh, creating HTML that you're going to inject uh, into an element, wiring up DOM events, working with IDs, working with classes, all of these kinds of things. It's very, very connected to the DOM. jQuery is a million miles away from the DOM. And, it, and if you do it right, you almost don't even think about it, which sounds weird when you're working with the web. So 
in in uh, in typical web, we we've taught you over and over and over again this idea of separation of concerns. So you need to have your HTML, your content, your JavaScript, your behavior, your your business logic your CSS, your styling, and all of those things need to be uh, kept separate. And then you take a look at something like uh, React and there is a blurring of the line. So all of a sudden it becomes possible to do absolutely everything with JavaScript. And uh, I won't do it to you today, but even CSS can be done in JavaScript. So React has uh, an affinity for doing things in JavaScript and moving things out of the, like not really doing as much in HTML. In fact, sometimes with some of these frameworks, you're not gonna touch the HTML almost at all. And you're gonna focus instead on, on the JavaScript, on working with scripting. So this is either a plus or a minus. So one of the downsides of this is that it tends to isolate people on a team who aren't JavaScript developers. So people who traditionally were CSS designers, people who worked with markup, people who focused on those things. React can feel like a slap in the face because you, you move up away from those things. You're not really thinking about, uh, you're not thinking about those details. However, if you're, if, you're a Jav if you're a programmer and you're working with JavaScript and you're comfortable with it, then you're gonna find that you can develop things a million miles an hour. It's just so, so fast because everything is all in one, uh, all in one place. So other ideas about React that are important to understand. Um, concepts that you've learned in object-oriented programming, things like encapsulation and, and so on, are gonna become important here. Composition, we'll talk a lot about. So the idea that we're gonna break things down into a, a set of components that we're going to work with, like there's a good diagram in the notes this week uh, in the intro to React, and it talks about this idea of a component. And so if we think about a web app, they've got a couple of examples, like a weather app, and they've got another one for an online store. The idea of React is that you're building an application. So if we think about this entire thing as an application, or this is an application, we want to be able to, the language we tend to use is, we wanna decompose this down into a set of components. How small can we break this down in order to be able to deal with it? So if you think about a weather app, we may have the current weather, we may have details, more details about the current weather. We may have a map. Um, we may have a sidebar with various things like menu options or so on. We have a header. So we have all of these different parts and probably we can further break these down. Like in the current weather, we might have the hourly weather. And so we have the hourly weather for now, for an hour from now, the next hour and so on, all the way across. We have these blocks of UI, blocks of functionality, things that we want to work with. And so we're trying to think about a big application as a, as a smaller and smaller set of components that we can build. React gives us the, the primitives and the tools to be able to model those components and then compose them or combine them together into these larger trees to make up applications. So this idea is really core to the way we're gonna build our UIs, and it's gonna feel different when, when we think about working with something like jQuery, we're thinking almost top down, we're thinking about the page as a whole, we think about globals. You know, so we have this idea of working with an ID, an ID meaning that I'm gonna go in from the top and I'm gonna find this ID inside this tree that I'm working with. And in React, we, we don't think that way, we, we, we switch the way that we approach this to think about isolated components which don't necessarily know about each other, don't have to know about each other. The details of each of these components can be isolated and kept separate from the other ones that are working. So another central idea in React is that we're gonna pass data down into our component tree and the components are going to use that data to create a snapshot of what the UI should look like at any given time. An interesting way to think about React, it's almost like a, a, an animation system or a scheduling system where what you're doing is you're taking data 
and you have a set of functions for translating that data into a particular view. So, I mean, a good example would be a map. If you think about a map, and a map has data that looks like uh, geolocation information. So maybe you have a latitude and a longitude. So if I think about the map and the way that it looks if the latitude and longitude are at a particular point, so I want to show the map at that point, when I say it's like a scheduling or an animation system, what you're doing is you're almost providing a frame. So instead of like this whole flow, you're saying, if the data were to look like this, if these were the coordinates, this is what the map would look like. And so you are letting React figure out how to do the flow of the whole application where things change and everything. And you're just worrying about taking in a piece of data, latitude and longitude, and giving back a map or whatever uh, particular thing that we're working on, whatever the component looks like. So another core idea that's interesting to React is that React doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the web. Now, that's kind of a weird thing to say because we are going to be doing a lot of web-related things. However, the, the concepts of React, this component-based one-way data flow that we're going to be building with, could be used and is used in other environments outside of the web. So for example, we're not going to talk about it in this, in this course, but React and React Native, like being able to build iOS or Android apps where instead of rendering to the DOM, you render to another uh, UI system or graphics system on an iOS device or an Android device. So React is very flexible that way. Um, I've mentioned this idea of React keeping track of the internal state of things, but I wanna just extend that idea slightly. So what React does is it gives us a, an implementation of a virtual DOM. So where this page here, if I were to pop open the inspector, I have a, you know, like this element is in the DOM. I have an actual DOM that the browser is using to, uh, to render the UI. And so if I make changes to the DOM, if I change uh, attributes uh, on these elements, or if I change uh, the child elements that are in there, it will, it will update the DOM. And traditionally, one of the problems with the DOM is that the DOM can be very slow uh, when you're trying to make applications that are highly responsive. So what React does is it maintains a parallel DOM, this virtual DOM in memory. And what it does is it applies all of the changes that need to happen to a virtual DOM rather than the real DOM. And then what it does is it calculates the difference between those two DOMs. And so it only needs to make small adjustments if something changes. Like for example, if I change this uh, title, I don't need to change the way that the rest of the page is rendered at all. So where jQuery is giving me the tools to reach deep inside of the DOM and get an element and change its HTML, something like this, React does that too. But it doesn't, but it sits at a higher level of abstraction. I'm not worried about getting a DOM element, changing its inner HTML, rendering that back to the page. I'm simply showing React, here's the way that I'd like this element to look. And React takes care of figuring out how to take the current DOM as it looks right now and how to produce the one that you want, this new one. So it's managing when and how to update the DOM for us. And we kind of sit back and we just define in this declarative style, we, we take in data and we declare, this is what that data should look like when it gets rendered. And React says, okay, leave it with me. I will, uh, I'll figure this out, I'll render it. So React is uh, really fast as a result of this because it minimizes how much it needs to do to the DOM for any given operation. Um, Okay, so some of the interesting things about React, uh, you know, philosophical things that we should just mention too, but as you know, as I wrap up this part of the discussion, talking about some of the high-level uh, philosophy of React. So an interesting idea of React is that React is uh, something that you can use incrementally. So if you look at the uh, page for React itself, we've got a web page, and then buried inside, we have some of these little, uh, we have pieces of React that are living in a page. So one of the ways that you can use React is you can use a little bit of React, like you can sprinkle it into an existing application. It's not all or none. 
So this is an important idea because many frameworks have, um, they have an all or none approach. You're either using this framework and it is 100% the way that you're building what you're building, or you are using a little bit of it. So React sits on the line of being a library and a framework in the sense of, do you have to be all in on this? Could you sprinkle a little bit of React into the thing that you're building? Or is it, I have to use all of it? And the answer is you can do a little or all. So sometimes people will build their entire application using React components. And sometimes they'll have a certain piece of the page that needs to be highly interactive and needs to change a lot. But like other stuff that doesn't need to change, like this text here, it's not gonna change. So do I need to uh, do I need to use React for that? Maybe not. And so maybe I could render that on the server side and only render the parts of the page that are going to be really dynamic and changing based on live data, like a weather component. You know, maybe the weather component can be written in React, and maybe the header and the main navigation could be written in um, you know some other uh, server side render technology or just static HTML. Okay, so another philosophical idea of React is that it, it doesn't introduce new features or new syntax where it can leverage things that already exist. So as a result, React doesn't have a massive API that you have to learn. This is gonna be, this is very different from Angular. When we get into Angular, Angular has a very large uh, syntax, a large API, large set of objects that we work with, and it has a different philosophy. React tries where it can to just use JavaScript or to just use the web to do what it's good at. And um, as a result, it doesn't have lots of APIs to learn, but the APIs that it does have, the ideas behind them are sometimes challenging because they bring in concepts, programming concepts from other languages or from other ways of thinking about how to build uh, stateful applications. So as a result, sometimes with React, you're, it's gonna take time to wrap your head around a concept, not because the code is difficult or the syntax is difficult, but because the way that you're thinking about how to write your code is different. So one of the, one of the implications of this is that because React doesn't force you to do things in a particular way, it means that the community, the React community as a whole, which is enormous, has solved the same problem many different ways. So when we talk about, like for example, what's the right way to do CSS and React? Well, I can think of about nine different ways to do it. And there's, there's a lot, there's probably 90 ways to do it. Everybody has a different way that they do it. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it means that the community has been able to experiment with lots of ways to extend React or to uh, build things on top of it or with it. And when you're, when you're starting out with React, it can be overwhelming because there are many decisions to be made. When you're gonna go and you're gonna pick up something and you're gonna start working with it, you have to decide what's my approach gonna be to routing? What's my approach gonna be to testing? What's my, what's my approach gonna be for CSS? all sorts of different things that you have to figure out. Um, but it's also a strength. So it means that learning React, React is pretty tight. It's this small little core. And once you understand that, you could go and pick up pieces from other places and add it into, um, into React. It also means that the React API is pretty stable. So they do a fantastic job at not breaking things as they move forward. Um, if something works in React, it's going to continue to work in React for a long time. They don't deprecate thing in the next release and then everything breaks. So they can't do that at Facebook. Facebook has so much code, so, so much JavaScript code. They can't uh, every six weeks decide we're going to throw this API away and we're going to start new. So there is a real incremental approach and a deprecation warning style transition in order to making things work. They care a lot about making sure that old code can be updated to new code or continues to work. Another big idea with React is that it needs to play nicely with third party tooling. So be, as I just told you a minute ago, the community experiments all the time. And because of this, we need to have the ability to plug in different libraries or plug in different existing tools the web already has a ton of things that we wanna be able to make use of. You shouldn't be limited 
and you aren't limited. So React lets you work with existing uh, DOM tooling, but it also lets you quote unquote escape. So when you're inside of React, I told you you're not working with the DOM, but if you need to reach out to the DOM and you need to do something in an older style or in a lower level way, React will let you do that. There are ways for you to be able to do this. Okay, just a note about this idea of, you know, continuing on with this philosophy uh, of React, the idea of these components. So we, we say that a component is sort of the smallest unit of uh, UI that you could think of, a set of behaviors and a visual representation of data. So in React, a, a fundamental idea is the idea of being able to compose larger, more complex systems out of smaller pieces. So instead of using inheritance and subtyping like you would in a lot of object-oriented programming languages, we're gonna use composition where we, we add things together or we compose, like we're gonna make a recipe, I'm gonna take you know butter, sugar, salt, flour, and I'm gonna turn that into cookies. I'm gonna compose those individual small pieces together to build something more complex, something that is greater than the sum of its parts. So this idea of composition is really important. You're gonna see it everywhere inside of React. It means that the way that we build our components, we build them so that our components don't really know about the rest of the system. The map in your weather, uh, in your weather app doesn't have to know about the header, doesn't have to know about the details of the weather, doesn't even have to know it's in a weather app. This map component is something you could rip out of this and put into another project. This is a huge advantage of working with React because we can build reusable components and I can use them across projects. There are tons and tons of existing libraries that people have put together of components that you can just plug into your, into your projects. So I'll show you lots of that as we go on. Um, what else should we mention briefly as we wrap up the, the philosophy piece here? Uh, we're going to, we're going to rely on React to call all of the code that we write. So this is another interesting idea that in React, we're going to create declarative, um, components like like this, you know, like where we say, I want to I want to be able to return a div that says hello to the users, the username. And we'll talk about the syntax in a minute. So forget about that for, for now. But I want to be able to declare that this is how the component should render. But I'm not going to call this code, I'm going to give up control of when this happens. And I'm going to give up control of how often it happens. I'm going to let React manage all of this for me. So I'm going to write a whole series of functions or a whole series of classes, and then I'm going to give them to React and say, I want you to make this work. So React is an engine for taking all of this, these declarative pieces, all of these components, combining it with data, and then making that su such that the, the application can snap to life and you suddenly have this thing that you can work on. React will figure out the most optimal time to call things. So it'll wait while the browser isn't busy to do certain things. It will queue up multiple requests to render things until it has like the right amount of work to do. I told you it does this diffing so that we don't have to worry about performance issues on updating the DOM. And React is also going to be this engine for managing our data. So this is going to be a huge idea for us. The concept of taking our declarative components and a set of data and being able to pass data from the top of our application down through our components. If we think about uh, building these decomposed uh, sets that we have all these components, the components live inside of other components. So I have my, my, my main component here for the weather app. Inside this, I have the current weather data. I have the details for the data. I have a map, et cetera, et cetera. I have this parent child uh, set up similar to the way that we would, you know, when we talk about the DOM itself, like the DOM is parent child relationships. I have a body, the body has a div, the div has a header, etc. That parent child relationship, we're going to do our modeling for uh, our data that way as well. Okay, so I'll, I'll pause there. I wanted to start just with uh, 
you know, a little bit of philosophy or a little bit of the big ideas of React before we got too far into working on it. And I wanted to encourage you that as you go into React, if it feels hard, if it feels weird, if it feels different, don't and don't immediately equate that with I don't like this or I don't understand this or um, just know that you're you're starting to work with very different concepts and it is it's not an incremental change to what we've been doing. It's not like the next iteration of jQuery. It's a very different way of thinking about how we're going to build these apps and we'll go slow and we'll we'll try and make sure that it makes sense, but ask lots of questions. Try and try and understand the underlying things that are going on, the philosophy of what's going on. A couple of practical things. You are going to need to install the dev tools. So React has really good developer tools. And so if you're on Firefox, you can install the React developer tools <clears throat> for Firefox. And if you're on Chrome, you can install them for Chrome. I have them in both my browsers and when I'm doing uh, when I'm doing development on a React site. So for example, I'm here I am on the uh, React, I'm on the React site itself. And what happens in my dev tools is I have, um, oh, I might not have it installed in this browser, which is unfortunate. Yeah, I don't have it installed uh, in this version of Firefox that I'm running. But you'll have an additional pane uh, that will pop up in your dev tools. And so it will allow you to go through and debug this. I'll show it to you when I start debugging uh, the things that we build coming up. Another thing that I'll just mention to you right now is we're not just going to use React on its own. So what tends to happen is we need to use, I mean, the best analogy I could give you is if you think about Linux, you don't use Linux on its own. You use a Linux distribution. So you download Ubuntu or Debian or Slackware or some other distribution of Linux, which contains Linux plus a whole bunch of other things that you need. So I said to you that React leaves a lot of decisions up to you as a developer about how you want to do uh, some aspects of building an application. And it focuses on the UI layer and rendering your UI. It doesn't do everything. So what's happened over time is that a bunch of these, I'll, I'll call them React distributions have come up. So we're going to talk about a number of them. I'll just mention them right now. Create React app is a big one, or it'll sometimes be called CRA. And I'll use that today in some of the videos that I'll do. Another one that I really like and I'm using a lot right now is next.js. And it is, it's a really powerful React framework that you can use. In both cases, you're using React, but you have other APIs around, other components around what you're doing. And another one that you'll hear people talk a lot about is Gatsby, which is for building um, static sites that use React. So you know, data-driven sites like a blog or something like that, um, where you have a lot of data that you want to render into React. So you'll see you'll see these pop up. I'll start with create React app for the first pieces that we build. Okay, I'm going to pause this part of the discussion. In the next uh, video, what I want to do is I want to talk about the JavaScript that you need to understand and the, some of the syntax pieces you need to understand before we dive into actually writing components. So I'll pause this here and I'll see you for the JavaScript piece.